Earlier seminars that I've done focused on an eight pin chip. Little tiny thing that has eight pins sticking out called a pickaxe 08M. They were about $3 a piece. They came out with a new chip. Actually, they've got a bunch of them, but the one I really like is an 18 pin chip. And a lot of people had asked me questions with that little eight pin chip in pre uh, previous years. Uh, could you use it to control traffic lights on a layout? I said, well, yeah, but you've only got a couple of pins so that the most lights you can control is maybe six or seven. And that may not be enough because if you've got lights going one way and lights going you know, perpendicular on a highway, plus you've got cross and don't walk and all that sort of stuff, you need a bunch of different lights to be controlled. This one has 18 pins and you've got control of about 15 of those 18. So you could conceivably control that many different LEDs for crossing signals or whatever you happen to want. It's a lot more expensive. It's five bucks. A Little bit of history. When I first started working with these things back in the 90s, the basic stamp, which is the one I started with, was $30 for the least expensive device. And when you're working with stuff like this, you're gonna kill a few. You're gonna mess up and instead of feeding it five volts, you know, you're gonna feed it 12 and it's not gonna work anymore. I have a box of them at home. And I usually bring them to pass around, but you know, trust me, you're gonna kill some. So it's a lot more fun to kill a $5 chip than it is a 30 or a $50 chip. This new chip, the 18M2, is much faster than the 08M. Has 15 pins that you can use out of the 18. Has much more memory, which is nice, because if you're doing complex things, you need to be able to store more. It'll work down as low as two volts. Those of you that might want to put something that's battery operated, like a Fred at the back of a, of a train or a Morse code beacon or something like that, put a couple AA batteries in there and it'll last for a long, long time because it'll continue work clear down to two volts. 5.4, 5.5. I wouldn't go above five just to be safe. Yeah. All right, let's start. We're going to build a controller from start to finish. And here's our objectives for the controller. It's going to control DC track power, just as we had the trolley going back and forth before. It's going to manage smooth acceleration and deceleration. Some point-to-point -point controllers just turn the power on, bang, it goes. And they turn the power off, bang, it stops. So that's not so good. We want it to be a little bit more managed than that. It never changes direction with the power on. If anybody follow what I mean by that? You don't want a train going along at you know, 40 scale miles per hour and go click and have it going 40 scale miles an hour in the other direction. There's these little things called gears that don't react well to that. And it's going to be controlled by an inexpensive TV remote. By the way, these remote controls have to be set to Sony. That's the most common setting if you've got a multiple remote control thing, set it to Sony codes and it'll run these things beautifully. And can handle several amps, which is more than we're likely to need for small engines. Okay, here are the parts. We need this new chip. It's the 18M2. It's not much to look at. Uh, as a matter of fact, the best I can do is to give you a, a picture in a minute, but it's this little guy right here. Just a little black strip with 18 pins sticking out, nine on each side. You need a double pole, double throw relay. We'll talk more about what that's for in a minute. You need a power transistor. What I'm using is something called a MOSFET, which is, it's nothing more than a transistor that works with higher powers real nicely. Inexpensive, couple bucks. The IR receiver chip that's going to get the control from the remote. You need a five volt power supply for the pickaxe. Now if you're gonna run your train on say 18 or 20 volts, there's a little device called a voltage regulator. They cost about a buck and it takes your 18 and turns it into five. And again, some sort of 18 volt power supply for the train. We're gonna start out with some schematics. All a schematic is is a pictorial diagram that shows how something is put together. There's a double pole, double throw relay that controls direction. Now I'm gonna dig digress here again for just a moment. And somewhere here. This is a double pole double throw toggle switch and I've got a picture of it up here and the way it works is kind of neat you take power and put it into the center contacts and you do a crossover with the end contacts so that if the switch is thrown in one direction you get the minus on this wire and the plus on this one if you throw the switch in the other direction they're reversed and what happens when you reverse polarity with a DC motor it changes direction so you need a double pole double throw switch wired with a crossover 
simplest thing in the world. Okay, here's our transistor. We'll show you that in a second. It, it gives, this transistor is not the one that controls the speed of the engine. What this one does is throw the relay because the pin on the pickaxe is not powerful enough, let's say, to throw a relay. And finally, we need a diode. I'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, there's the schematic. This is a relay which is nothing more than this. And there's a coil that throws it for you. This transistor down here takes the power that comes off of that pin on the pickaxe and let's just say it amplifies it. It makes it stronger so that it can throw that. The important thing is this diode. Everybody's heard of back EMF. What that means is if you've got a coil that's energized, any kind of coil, whether it be a motor or a relay, and you turn the power off, when that field collapses, it puts a reverse voltage back into what it came from. Well, what's going to happen? If you let this thing collapse, it's going to put power back into that transistor backwards. It'll work for a while, maybe 50, maybe 100 times, but eventually it'll blow a hole through the junction inside of that transistor. This little diode stops that. So almost any time you see a relay on a circuit board, right next to it is a diode. And that's to protect against back EMF. So we have the relay, we have the transistor, and we have the diode. When power is put onto this line, it activates this transistor, pulls the coil, and throws these contacts and reverses the train. Everybody with me up to there? At least you're shaking your heads, yes? Okay. Second schematic, we're going to add a power transistor to control the speed of the train. So what we've done now is cut the power that normally goes in here from the power supply and we put in a big transistor. This is a transistor that might be this high, it has a big metal tab on top of it so it can handle more power. There it is there. And I just wanted to make sure, this is the symbol for a regular transistor, that's the symbol for a MOSFET. They do the exact same thing, they work in the exact same way. I just wanted to make sure that you saw both of those. And finally, we add one more part, which was that little infrared receiver that I showed you. That's all it takes. You give it five volts, you connect it to the negative part of the power supply, and the output goes to a pin on the pickaxe. The pickaxe knows how to talk to it already. You don't have to program it. It's really great. The last schematic, I've added two parts. I've added a, here's that voltage regulator I was talking to you about, takes the power from the uh, 18 volts or whatever you're feeding to the train, gives you five volts to make all of these devices happy, and this is the part that actually connects to the computer so you can program it. Yes? And I can take that right off the train pickups. You have to take it off of the, uh, well you have to control the polarity. You have to pick it up from the transformer, whatever power supply that you've got, because a voltage regulator requires plus on one wire and minus on another. If you switch them, you'll blow it up. Okay, so I can't take it off the train pickup. It's got to come right. Well, you can, but then you have to use a bridge rectifier to make sure that the polarity is consistent. But remember, this is a track side controller. This is your transformer that's supplying a constant 12 to 24 volts DC. This is the whole gizmo that's controlling it, and this goes to the track. This is not in a train. When I, had to, when I wanted to put it inside of the trolley, remember what I had to do. I had to add a bridge rectifier and some capacitors in order to put it inside. Okay? Well, I'm running DCC. Yes. So, isn't that a constant polarity on the track in DCC? No. DCC is, is square wave, sort of AC. It, it's, it's square wave AC, I'll call it. It goes from above to below, but not nice and smooth like this, but like this. So I'd have to hook directly into the transformer. Well, you wouldn't, do, you wouldn't use what I'm describing right here with DCC at all. This is to run a track-powered train, period. If you wanted to put something like this in a train that was on a DCC power track, you'd have to put it in the train, and you'd have to put a bridge rectifier and capacitor in there to give it consistent DC. Okay. This is this. So we can take a quick look at it and see what's on this. This is the pickaxe chip I was talking about. And if you want to take the time to count, there are nine pins down there and nine pins over there. This is that voltage regulator that takes the input power and converts it to five volts to make all this happy. This is the programming end of it. It takes two resistors. That's it. That connects right to your computer. This is a double pull, double throw relay. 
This is the little infrared receiver that takes control from the infrared remote control. This, you, it's a little hard to see, but that's the little transistor that throws the, uh, the relay, and hidden behind this is the diode. And those are those little resistors that fed the transistors. That's it. There's about, I don't know, $10 worth of parts there. Maybe a little more, not much.